welcome to Radical Engagement. Um, and today we are talking about uh, emotional capitalism, a section from Bong Joel Han's Psychopolitics. Psychopolitics is a book that came out um, in English in 2017. Uh, it's definitely translated from German. Bong Joel Han. Uh, Bong Joel Han um, was born in South Korea, and he's a philosopher and cultural theorist. He was a professor at Berlin University of the Arts, and he still sometimes gives courses there. He is in his mid-60s. He was born in 1959, but we don't know much else about him because he's very, very private. He's famous for such books as uh, The Burnout Society, The Society of Transparency, Psychopolitics, um, and recently on a bunch of uh, books on Chinese culture and philosophy. Um, I find Han frustrating and interesting. Frustrating in that I think he makes a lot of insights interesting that I think those insights are kind of useful. But I also think he tends to under-theorize them and he lets you fill in a lot of the work to make his arguments work. That is my personal opinion, but we'll see if that's true today. Um, he has taught at various schools in Germany, University of Basel, uh, uh, the Art University of Berlin, um, Karlsruhe University, etc. Uh, his interests are all over the place. He's interested in 18th, 19th, and 20th century ethics, social philosophy, phenomenology, cultural theory, aesthetics, religion, and intercultural philosophy. Um, and he is a very, very prolific guy. He has written uh, many, 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 many little books like this. All right. So we're in emotional capitalism. If you're following along in the Verso version, we're on page 41. Today, talk of feelings and emotion has grown inflationary. Many academic disciplines are research in emotion. Asterisk, Hans here referring to like affect theory and stuff like that. All of a sudden, the human being no longer counts as an animal rationale. Instead, man is a creature of sentiment. That said, hardly anyone bothers to ask where this sudden interest in emotions came from. Scientific emotion researchers are clearly not reflecting much on their own activities. Thus, they have failed to remark that the emotional boom stems from the economic process above all. Worse still, utter conceptual confusion prevails. Emotion, feeling, and affect seem interchangeable for many researchers. Asterisk, I have seen this too. Affect theory and emotional state theory are pretty much simultaneous with each other. Yet feeling and emotion are not identical. We speak, for instance, of a feeling for language, athletics, or other people. Spruck geful, bal geful, mit geful, respectively. Linguistic aptitude, a knack for sports and compassion. Uh, that's, I don't know why they left the German untranslated there. Anyway, makes it sense. One may have a feel for language or a feel for others, but no one has an emotion for language. Our experiences calm emotion, C-O-M dash emotion. There is no such thing as a language affect or a calm effect either. Mourning is a feeling too, but it sounds strange to speak of an affect of mourning or of an emotion of mourning. Affect and emotion refer strictly to subjective matters, whereas feelings refers to something objective. Feeling can be recounted. It has narrative length or breadth. Neither affect nor emotion admits an account. Asterisk. Is that true? Do you think that there's no accounting for emotion that you can't think of when you felt an emotion? It's more abstract than that. I'm not sure that I think that's true. I'm not sure that I think it's true in English anyway. The crisis of feeling can be observed in contemporary theater 
which also represents the crisis of giving account. Erzalon. Today, the narrative, the narrative fear of feeling is yielding to the clamorous fear of affects. Because narrative is lacking, an affective mask gets pulled onto stage. But in contrast to feeling, affect does not open up space. Instead, it steers a linear path in order to discharge to unload itself. The digital medium is an affect medium too. Digital communications fosters immediate release of effect, catharsis, affect ab for. Simply on the basis of temporality, digital communications conveys an affect more than it transmits feeling. Ship storms are streams of effect. They represent exemplary phenomena of digital communication. I, I, one of the things I, I, I get very frustrated with Bung Chul Han about is because he's speaking in such brief aphoristic styles, he's also speaking on a super abstract level with it's very hard to argue with him because he's not giving you examples of exactly what he's talking about, except through use of language. But his language here is specifically often uh, German and relies on you understanding the German. Anyway, feelings are constantive. For example, we say, I have a feeling that. In contrast, it is impossible to say, I have an affect or an emotion that. Emotions are not constantive, but performative. So feelings are what you feel and they make stuff up. Emotions are what you do or how you show those, those things. And affects are somewhere in between, I guess. They refer to actions and deeds. In that sense, they're behavioral. That's far in talking. Back to text. Furthermore, they are intentional and goal-oriented. Feelings, on the other hand, do not necessarily display an intentional structure. Often the feeling of anxiety has no concrete object. What is it that makes anxiety different from fear, which has an intentional structure? Nor is it a feeling that is a sense for language intentional. Its non-intentionality is what distinguishes it from linguistic expression, which is because it expresses is emotive. A feeling of cosmic oneness, an oceanic sense of the world, ein cosmic, ein cosmikisch Mitgefühl, ein oceanisch Weltgefühl, that does not focus on anything or anyone in particular is also possible. Veld, veld, Neither emotions nor affects achieve the dimensions that characterize feelings. Emotions and affects are expressions of subjectivity. How does subjectivity not characterize feeling? I guess because feeling is something you can separate from yourself and that's those objective. Is that the argument here? There's a whole lot of this relies on actually relies on on the particularities of using grammar or somehow ontologically substitutive of these emotional states. I'm not sure that I buy that. Feelings also have a different temporality than emotions. They emit duration. Emotions prove significantly more fleeting and short-lived than feelings. In common parlance, I'd agree with that. Likewise, an affect is often limited to a single moment. In contrast to feelings, emotions do not represent a state. Emotion, the emotion does not stand. There is no emotion of rest. A feeling of calm is easy to conceive. An emotion of calm. That's still sayable in English. In contrast, the expression emotional state has a paradoxical ring. Emotions are dynamic, situative, and performative. Emotional capitalism exploits precisely these qualities. Aha, now we have the title entering. Feelings, in contrast, cannot be readily exploited in so much as they have no performativity. Finally, affects are not performative so much as eruptive. They lack performative directionality. So emotions are performative. Affects uh, are explosive performativity, according to Han. Atmosphere or mood, stimul, differs from both feeling and emotion. It possesses even more objectivity than feeling. Objectively, a space or a room can harbor any given atmosphere. An atmosphere or mood expresses a way it is. In contrast, emotions derive from deviations from the way it is. 
For instance, a place may diffuse a friendly mood. This atmosphere is something wholly objective. There is no such thing as a friendly emotion or a friendly affect. I've heard friendly affect said in English. Anyway, atmosphere slash mood is neither intentional nor performative. It is this element where one happens to find oneself. It was Warren Man Sick Defunt. It was Warren Man Sick Defunt. It represents a state of being or a state of mind. Befindet will kite. So much of this is based on, on relationships between the words in German. That's why there's so much of this. That they put in parentheses untranslated. As such, the atmosphere is static and constellative, whereas emotion is dynamic and performative. Where, where distinguishes a state, a disposition, in contrast to weather, a direction defines emotion, feeling in turn is a matter of therefore. Why? Eva Ilzo's cold intimacies, the making of emotional capitalism, offers no answers to the question of why it is that feeling experiences a boon under conditions of capitalism in particular. Does it? What is more, the book equates the feeling and emotions without drawing any conceptual distinctions at all, nor is it very useful to locate the question of feelings under capitalism at its inaugural stages. Weber's Protestant work ethic contains a core thesis about the role of emotions and economic actions for which anxiety is provoked by inscrutable divinity, which is at the heart of the capitalist entrepreneur's frantic activity, Eva Illou's cold intimacies. That's a quote. It is mistaken to understand anxiety in terms of emotion. Anxiety is a feeling. These semantic distinctions really mean a lot for Han. It corresponds tempor temporality proves incompatible with effect. Effect is not a constant state. As such, it lacks constancy that defines feeling. It is a constant feeling of anxiety that would entail a frantic entrepreneurial activity. But what Weber analyzes, analyzes is an aesthetic, an aesthetic, A-S-C-E-T-I-C, -E capitalism of accumulation, which obeys rational logic more than it follows emotional logic. Accordingly, capitalism of this sort does not feed into the consumer capitalism, which derives its profits from emotions. Moreover, emotional capitalism operates through selling and consumption of means and emotions. <coughs> it is not use value, but a motive or cultic value that plays a constitutive role in the economy of consumption. Give me an example, Han. I don't believe you unless you give me something based it off more than an assertion. By the same token, Illo fails to account for the in fact, emotions come to possess value for capitalism only when they switch to an immaterial production occurs. So rents, basically, is what Han is saying here. Emotions have become the means of production only in our own times. Have they become means of production? They're means of motivating consumption. Not means of production. That's not what that means. Anyway. Although also contends the core of the Dokaimian sociology, solidarity represents a bundle of emotions, binding social actors to a central symbols of society they inhabit. Summing up her argument, she declares, quote, unbeknownst to them, canonical sociological accounts of modernity contain, if not full-fledged theory of emotions, at least numerous references to them, anxiety, love, competitiveness, indifference, guilt are all present in more historical and sociological accounts of the ruptures which have led to the modern era. All these references to various sociological theories of emotion do nothing to explain all the boom of emotion today. This corresponds to Illo's neglect of the conceptual distinctions between feeling, emotion, and affect. After all, the indifference and guilt are neither affects nor emotions. They are only meaningful to speak of the feelings of guilt. Hey. <clears throat> Illo's has failed to notice that the boom of emotions in our time ultimately derives from neoliberalism. The neoliberal re regime deploys emotions as resources in order to bring about heightened productivity and achievements. Give me an example, Han, or I don't believe you. 
starting at a certain level of production and rationality, which is a medium of disciplinary society, has its limits. Henceforth, it is experienced as a constant and inhibition. Suddenly, it seems rigid and inflexible. At this point, emotionally, emotionality takes place, which is the attending feeling of liberty, the free feeling of personality. After all, being free means giving free reign to emotions. Emotional capitalism banks on freedom. It hails emotion as the exposition of unbridled subjectivity. Neoliberal technologies of power exploit the same subjectivity mercilessly. Which technologies, Uncle John? Rationality is defined by objectivity, generality, and steadiness. Is it? That doesn't seem how I normally define it. As such, it stands opposite emotionality, which is subjective and situation and volatile. Emotions arrive above all when the circumstances change, and perception shifts. Rationality entails duration, consistency, and regularity. It prefers stable conditions. The neoliberal economy, increasingly dismantled by, the continu by continuity and progressively integrating instability in order to enhance productivity, is pushing the emotionalization of the productive process forward. How? What's the mechanism, Han? Accelerated communication also promotes its emotionalization. Rationality is slower than emotionality. It has no speed, as it were. The process of acceleration now is leading to a dictatorship of emotion. There's so much revolutionary phrase mongering in this, and yet I feel like this is mostly based on puns. Anyway, consumer capitalism lists emotions in order to generate more desires and needs. That's absolutely true, I think fair. Emotional design models. Molds emotions and shapes emotional patterns for the sake of maximizing consumption. All in all, today we do not consume things so much as emotions. The former cannot be consumed without end, but the latter can. Emotions assume the dimensions beyond the scope of individuals. Uh, emotions involve dimensions beyond the scope of the individual's use value. Of, of use value. In doing so, they open up a field of consumption that is new and knows no limits. In disciplinary society, where one's task is to function, emotion represents the services. According to every effort is made to weed them out. Disciplinary societies concerned Orfeo Pady, E-O-R-T-H-O-P-A-E-D-Y, <coughs> seeks to make a shapeless mass of dough into an unfeeling machine. Machines function best when all emotions and feelings have been switched off. That's an argument by analogy. The boom in emotions today stems not least of all from a new immaterial mode of production in which communication interacts, interaction plays an even greater role. I guess this is assuming social media is a mode of production. I'm not sure that I buy that. No, no one has said let them eat social media. Let them eat X. It calls not just for cognitive competence, but also for emotional competence. In this context, an, an integral person is installed in the process of production. Daimler Chrysler has publicly declared that since employees' behavior and their social and emotional skills play an increasing role in the evaluation of the work, this will be assessed on the basis of objectives achieved and the quality of outcomes. Now, sociality, communication, and even individual conduct are being exploited. People provide raw material with the optimization of the corporate communication. As Hugh Packard puts it, HP is a firm where one can breathe a spirit of Communication, a spirit of interrelated relations where people can communicate, where you go towards others in an effective relationship. A paradigm shift is taking place in the administrative level of companies. Emotions being granted more and more significance. Rational management techniques are being replaced by emotional management. Managers are safely today Managers are, today are safely leaving the principle of rational action behind. Increasingly, they resemble motivation coaches. Motivation connects with emotions. Positive emotions provide the ferment, and while wow, by the ferment that makes motivation grow. <coughs> yeah, 
Sorry, guys. I'm getting a little. I'm a little frustrated with this one. I would. I expect more substance about how this is actually working, not just assertions that it happened. Emotions are performative insofar that they call forth certain actions as inclinations they represent the energetic, the sensory, even the sensuous basis for activity. Emotions are steered by the limbic system, which is also what drives where drives are seized. They form pre-reflective, half-conscious, psycho instinctual level of action and state full awareness. Neoliberal psychopolitics sees the emotion in order to influence the actions on the pre- on the pre-reflective level. By way of emotion, its managers it manages to cut and operate deep inside. As such, emotion of words, highly efficient medium for the psycho politically steering the integral person, the person as a whole. End of section. I think we see here a lot of argument by assertion and a lot of reification of X abstraction doing Y without giving us an example to see what the metaphor is. It's a very frustrating way to do theory. And I find this section particularly frustrating. It's almost interesting, but doesn't quite get there because it doesn't, it relies on a bunch of distinctions, but then doesn't prove what specific institutions or whatever are doing this. It just asserts it wildly. And on that note, and in that frustration, I'm going to leave us here today. Mm -hmm.